Artec Studio 11 has an excellent autopilot feature, but there are some cases where you may want to or need to process things manually. I'll walk you through that in this video. Let's switch over to the Artec Studio software. You'll be able to see my software here, as well as my scan subject on this little turntable. I'll be using the Artec Space Spider today, although everything that I'm doing also applies to Artec Eva scans. Uh, since the processing is the same in the studio, no matter which scanner you're using. I also have this manual processing guide that you can follow along in. So the first thing you have to do, of course, is scan. So let's get some scan data here. I'm going to keep automatic base removal off and enable real-time fusion. I'm not going to get into all the ins and outs of scanning in this video. This is really just a video to walk you through the manual process step by step. As you're following along in the guide, um, the guide does point out certain numbers and tips and tricks that you can use while you're um, processing things manually. Now I'm going to get three scans of this object. In addition to this manual processing guide um, and this video that goes along with it, um, you can look for our other videos that give more in-depth information about the specific steps that we're going to cover in this, uh, in this video here. And this is our last scan. We want a complete object. So I'm scanning it from multiple angles. Okay. So let's switch over to just the software. And the first step in that manual processing guide was scanning, so we've done that. The next step is the erase tool. So if you enabled automatic base removal, this would be gone already, but I wanted to just show a little bit of the eraser tool under, under uh, editor over here on the left hand side. Just click that. It'll open up the editing tab and then click eraser. Sorry. Make sure over here on the right hand side that you've only selected the object that you want to work on. I'm actually going to come over here and delete my fusions. I'm just selecting them and hitting the delete key because I don't need those anymore. That was just a preview while I was scanning. All right, so I'm going to use the cutoff plane selection tool. I'm going to hold control over here. And if I hold control shift, I can move my plane up and down. So I'm going to do that to the other two. Again, Go into the eraser. I have the cutoff plane selection um, tool selected there. I'm going to hold control and when I move my mouse, my little um, selection circle pops up. You can scroll up and down to make it larger, smaller. I'm just going to paint a little bit here. I like to paint a little bit on both sides. Kind of help it average things. Scroll my mouse wheel up until I'm covering that base. Click erase. And then one more time, hold control, paint a little bit there, control, paint a little bit there, control shift, scroll up a little bit, and erase. Okay, so um, you can also use that eraser tool to erase any other um, portions of the data that you don't want in your final model. So the next step after the eraser, after editing, um, is the alignment. So I'm going to come to my Align tab here over on the left. I, I made sure on the right there in my workspace that I selected all three scans. I'm going to click the Align button over here on the left hand side. And then I'm just going to use the Align, the Auto Alignment here. But we will have a video on manual alignment so look for that as well if you're looking um, for tips on how to manually align your scans. And 
And this auto alignment can really save you a lot of time if you have a, a whole lot of scans. There it is, so we're all lined up. I'm gonna click apply in the bottom left hand side. Then I'm gonna go back to my tools tab here on the left hand side. And the next step in the processing guide is global registration. I'm going to expand that. So any, any of these algorithms here, you can just click the little button next to it to expand it so you can change features here. I'm not gonna get into all the details here, but you wanna leave these settings alone most of the time. And we're gonna do geometry only for this object. If I scan something like a coffee cup where there's hardly any geometry, everything's very symmetrical, um, but there was a, a texture color pattern on the outside of that cup, um, or maybe you drew X's all over, over the object to help with tracking, um, you, you would want to actually choose texture and geometry, though that does take a little longer. Again, there's lots of tips and tricks in, the, uh, in that manual processing guide PDF um, to help you along the way with all these steps. Okay, so global registration is done. The next thing we're going to do is outlier removal. And this is the next step in the processing guide. And also notice that it, it does say that it's for space spider scans. So you don't really use outlier removal for the Artec EVA. This is the only place where it really differs. Um, I am going to use it for, uh, for this scan though, because it is a spider scan. What outlier removal does is it's going to remove all this noise. See all these spikes and these random noise pieces just floating around? That can ruin your small details. So we want to run outlier removal um, to get rid of those. Two is the, the um, standard, that's the default. Um, you can, if you want something a little less aggressive, um, you can set it to three. That helps sometimes. And you want this resolution to be whatever resolution you want your final um, fusion to be at. So now that we're looking at resolution here, we come over here and we're going to look at this max error um, column here. This is, the, this is the best possible resolution that I could put over here in this, in this resolution field, right? So whatever you put here has to be the same or higher than this number over here in the max error column. Um, and then for outlier removal, this should also be equal to whatever you want your fusion to be later on. So I'm going to click apply and run that. A little note over here, um, you won't get this if you're running through this, this project with me here, but every now and then you'll get uh, a warning over in this column. We have a separate video for that where I'll show you how to get in there and edit frames if, if needed. So you can manually move frames around and remove things and, and make your quality better if you need to. Okay, so outlier removal is done. Notice it looks a lot cleaner. It removed most of the spikes and things floating around the object here. The next thing we're going to do, the next step is fusion. So we have a couple different fusions here. Again, we'll have a separate video explaining all those fusions, but I'm going to use sharp fusion for the spider scans and you actually use Smooth Fusion for most of the, uh, the EVA scans. So I'm going to come over here, and I want my resolution to be 0.3. Looking at my max error over here in the right-hand column in my workspace, um, I could give it a resolution of 0.1, but it's not really needed for this model. And, and this is in millimeters here. So when I put 0.3, that's 0.3 millimeters resolution. I'm going to tell it to make it watertight, and click apply. So that option where there was a drop down that showed watertight, that is what it's going to do with the holes. It's going to fill all holes uh, in the scan in this case. If I chose, uh, the, the other option is to fill by radius. So you can put in a number value uh, in millimeters and it'll fill any hole that size or smaller. And then the third hole fill option under sharp fusion is uh, the manual hole filling, where once it's done with the fusion, it will take you over to a hole filling screen where you can click on the various holes 
and fill in just what you need and leave the rest. Okay, so our fusion is done. The next step in the guide is the small object filter. You will want to run this after, after every fusion. I'm going to say leave the largest object and click apply and that will leave the largest object um, in my fusion which in this case it's very obviously the largest thing and the only thing I could see was the sumo model itself but there could have been other detached things floating around that I couldn't really see it would have um, running small object filter gets rid of all of that the other option there if you have multiple pieces that you want to keep but maybe you still want to filter out small um, pieces of noise and stuff that are detached you could say filter by threshold and experiment with this number right here um, if, if it, this number gets rid of things that you wanted to keep you can press control Z or click this undo button up here make your number smaller and try again so you can kind of experiment with that small object filter if you ever have a scan that's multiple pieces and you want to just um, be careful of what you're, you're getting rid of okay and so after small object filter um, you can come in and run a mesh simplification so a lot of programs that you would export to they really can't handle high polygon counts um, if I come over here in my workspace on the right hand side and if I, if I double click on the fusion that was created I have about 579,000 polygons uh, so that might be fine for a lot of programs if you're going into ZBrush that's probably not a problem but you know if you're going into certain CAD programs they might not be able to handle that much or that high of a poly count so we can actually reduce that mesh I'm going to use mesh simplification here or the fast mesh simplification there are other, are other options pointed out in the guide and we'll also have another video talking about mesh simplification as well if you're interested in the ins and outs of all these um, all these different options here but I'm going to just use fast mesh simplification I'm going to set it to 200,000 polygons and click apply okay so now if I come over here and click or double click my fusion again I'm right at 200,000 polygons exactly where I wanted to be so the next step here is the edges tab and this really applies more to something um, that has holes in it um, but if you come over here to the edges tab and uh, if you see any anything populated in this holes field um, you can select them and fill in the holes it doesn't really apply to this model but you can do that here this is also where you can come in and smooth jagged edges if you have an open model so we don't have anything to do there I'll just close that and then the you can you can do a couple things here so you could either come in and you could edit your model further there's some editing tools that we'll go over in a different video that you can edit things out you know you could smooth out this line here you could remove portions of the mesh so you could do that um, you could also just export right now as is um, if you don't care about color texture you could go to file export meshes and export this in any number of mesh formats um, but we do want to apply texture so this is where we would do that I'd come over here on the left hand side and click the texture button I'm going to make sure my fusion is selected you might have multiple fusions depending on what you're doing um, so you know just select the one that you want to apply color to and then down here select the scans that you want to uh, apply the color data from Th these are the raw scans that we captured uh, let's say I knew that scan 3 had really bad texture or I just for some reason didn't want to use scan 3 I could just click scan 1 hold control click scan 2 and just apply using those two but I want to select all of them I'm going to leave all these settings at the default this works well for most things um, but you can get in here and tweak things if you need to texture normalization that option down here in the bottom left that evens everything out since it's a handheld scanner um, sometimes you're closer sometimes you're farther away from the model and that can really give you lighter and darker textures um, so leave that checked 
And then also there was an in-paint missing texture option that I left checked as well. Um, if you're ever missing any texture in your model, it'll fill in that, that gap in the texture based on what's around it. Okay, so when it's done applying the texture, uh, it gives you the option to adjust the texture. So this looks a little dark. That tends to happen a lot of times um, just with the texture normalization process. So I'm going to come in here and just adjust this a little bit. And there's some, there's some general numbers in that processing guide that you can look at um, to help you adjust things properly. So that looks closer to what I need right there. I'm going to click apply in the bottom left corner. And that's my, my finished model. I can now export in either, let's say, an STL, which is pretty standard, but if I want to carry color, I'm going to export as an OBJ. Um, any number of formats are available um, for exporting. And that's all there is to it. Those are the basics of manual processing within Artex Studio 11. Look for our other videos that cover specific steps within that manual process. Also, you can find scanner specs and scan samples on our website, digitizeddesigns.com.